Good day, all true footy babies. It's Jesse and the Stank Man back again for yet another video. How are you today, Busher? Yeah, pretty good, mate. In pretty today's good. video, we are going to do a reflection on the decade that was, because I'm pretty sure everyone across YouTube, across all the genres, are doing that right now. So let's have a look at maybe our best teams for the decade, Bush, yep. starting from 2010 to 2019. Start off, why don't you take us through your back six, and then I'll go through my back six. In my full back line, I've gone Shannon Hearn in a pocket. I've gone on Rance is the full back, pretty self-explanatory that one. Hodgy is the other back pocket, again, pretty self-explanatory. I've gone the half back, I've gone Basha Hooley. He's probably more later end of the decade, but even earlier in the decade, he was solid. McGarve is the other key back, and then old Shawnee Burgoyne, pretty steady contributor for that Hawthorne back line, but never really had a star key back. It was relying on guys like Hodge and Burgoyne. I think you and I have a very similar back six. We've both gone Rance and McGovern, pretty much undeniably the best two key backs yeah, of the decade, I would say. Luke Hodge picks himself. He's probably probably the first one picked there for me. Gone with Burgoyne as well, because he's pretty much best 22 for that whole decade. I'm pretty sure yeah. he's at Hawthorne. He's, uh, he's played in that many finals. He's played in the three-peat. He's, pretty he's much played no more runner. games at Hawthorne than he did at Port now, hasn't he? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I did go for Hearn as well, although yeah. his best form came sort of later. I struggle with putting him over Enright or Birch or guys like that, but I just think Hearn at his peak in the last couple of years mm. has been a better player than some of those players. He's been one of the best players in his position. And I chose him over Hooley, who for the same thing that you sort of said, I think Hooley just came... Bit late. Bit, maybe a bit yeah. late. He's been fantastic and he's definitely in the mix, but for me, he doesn't quite make it. I've actually gone with Heath Shaw on that other halfback line because he was a really good part of that awesome Collingwood side at the start of the decade. And even well. GWS, he had some pretty good form until the last year or so, and even then, he hasn't been bad. I'll give that. All right, so why don't you take us through your midfielders? When I did this, I wanted to try and find proper wings, but I really yeah. sort of, there's too many good mids generally, so I've sort of done what the Australian selectors do pretty who, much. Who would you pick as your first wing? It would almost be Gaff. Yeah. I had, Ga pure wingman. I had Gaff as my first pure wingman. I just was trying to think of pure wings. He was the only one I could really think of that would mm. be probably deserving. Yeah. I did have him as an honourable mention, actually. Yeah, I never thought I'd say that. the words honourable mention and Andrew Gaff in the same sentence, but here I'm we are. Just still salty over that little scuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Pendles on a wing. I'm actually, I've written it down as Gary Ablett Jr., but I might switch him with Dusty, actually, because I was reading an article just before, while I was on the ferry, actually. I was reading an article that made a very good point about Dusty, so I'm going to switch those two now. So you're going Pendles? Dusty and Trent Cotchin on the other wing. Hate it. Continue. My followers. I, I, I'll go admit, when you guys said this, I laughed, but when I tried to think of a ruck for like longevity, even towards the end when he wasn't as good, he was still a very solid tat ruckman. And my bias probably did come in a bit. I've gone with Sandy. Why would you laugh at Sandy? I feel like he's a clear number one choice. He was not that good for the later half of the decade. Even when he lost it, he was still a very good tat ruckman. There was no one else really that dominated longer than a two-year patch maybe in the decade. So I went with him for longevity factor. And then Fife and Danger is the other two. With my midfield, I went Pendlebury on the wing as well. Again, yeah. you can't really pick... Like, like we would have said, it would have yeah. been Gaffy for picking a pure wingman, but I couldn't pick Gaff over Pendlebury. Yeah. Uh, Pendlebury's also my captain because I just think he's been a fantastic leader. Fife in the guts, probably the first midfielder picked. And the other wing, I've actually gone Sam Mitchell. Just I was contemplating Sam Mitchell, I got to admit. He's in my contenders list. Yeah, just for longevity and the fact he won a brown low as well. Yeah. Sanderland's clear first ruck for me. I think he was the best over the stretch. Gorn sort of came good later, and yeah. I do have Gorn on my bench. But I think Sanderland's just did it for longer, even though he tailed away. Dangerfield and Dusty are my on ballers yeah. as well, which is a clear choice. So Fife, Dusty and Danger made it really easy, and then Pendlebury and Mitchell as well. Yeah, Grundy and Gorn really didn't ascend until a bit late to really put a stamp on that. Goldstein had a couple good years. That's true. My forward line, I've gone... Well, I originally had Dusty, but I've switched him with Ablett Jr. now. I've gone Buddy as the centre half, Stevie J. And then my full forwards, I've gone Eddie Betts as a pocket, obviously. He's probably the premier small forward of the decade. JK as the full forward. As I said in the podcast, it's probably going to release not too far around this. He's a fucking jet. And I originally had a different name here, but I'm going to switch it to someone on my interchange bench and Jack Rewalt had the Coleman's in that era even though the three tolls are sort of either way on you can't get away with the free tall setup, so I'll go with him over who I initially had. My forward line, I am going Gary Ablett Jr. on the forward flank, even though he played midfield for a long time. Kennedy, I yeah. think, uh, had two Coleman, should have had three. Steve Johnson takes yeah. my other flank, absolute no-brainer there. Again, I've gone with Jack Rewell. I actually couldn't split Rewell and Kennedy to make this team. I feel like they're both yeah. pretty much on a, on a level in terms of ability, but they're both behind Buddy Franklin, who's been arguably the best player uh, probably since I've been watching football, realistically. A lot of Buddy's success, I feel, came just before this decade, though. 
Well, he had he his had, He's had a lot of successes in this decade, obviously, but the 100 was before. That's true, but I feel like he's been consistently good yeah. since then. Yeah. He's won three. He's definitely there. No, he won two premierships. But I don't think he's clear cut ahead of Kennedy and Ray Waltz. Well, more what I'm getting at. He definitely is there, yeah. but I don't think he's as clear cut as you're suggesting he is. Fair enough. I'll disagree. And finally, Eddie Betts takes my last pocket spot as the definite best small forward in this decade. Why don't you rattle through your interchange? Joel Selwood, Sydney Josh Kennedy, because that, that article, I originally didn't have him in, but that article I alluded to was like most possessions and stuff of the decade. He was dominant in that sort of area. And he's been on a very successful team in Sydney. So I thought I probably had to give love to one of those midfielders from that dominant Sydney team throughout this decade. And he was probably the pick of the bunch. Gross. Dane Swan, he's had the brown low, obviously a lot of success in the earlier half of that Collingwood team. And then I, I originally had Jack Raywell on the bench, but I'll switch him now with, my guy originally had there, Michael Walters. And other than Betts, I couldn't think of a really dominant small forward throughout the decade. I went a little different with my interchange. I picked one spare player from each position. That's yeah. why a couple of players were unlucky. So my first on baller was Joel yeah. Selwood because he's yeah. just been so good over the stretch. Now to think about it, I kind of like Josh Kennedy more. So I might actually... I might actually change it last minute and go Josh Kennedy on the bench, yeah. Sydney. Max Gorn is my backup ruck. I think he yeah. just gets the edge over Grundy. And just think he's Dane. Yeah, Gundy. that's right. I think Gorn has just done a little bit more in the decade than Grundy, but I do think Gundy, Grundy will end up the more decorated yeah. player. The defender position will be Corey Enright. He's Deserving, the next yeah. best defender. And I'm going to change another one on the spot. I had Silver Rioli. I'm going to change to Michael Walters. I do think Michael Walters has been better in this generation, in this decade, as a small forward who plays through the middle. I think he's underrated by maybe Eastern States media. And in WA, I think he's rated just about exactly where he should be. I'm completely blank. Don Cyril, I got to admit, when I was yeah. doing this list, and I probably would have had a very tough toss up between Cyril and. Walters. He did win a Norm Smith and exactly. a three-peat. So, mm. yeah, it is a it's, hard one. But yeah. I do actually think I would rather recruit Michael Walters um, as an 18-year-old mm. right now. Are there any other players that you were, were a little bit miffed to? Yeah, I sort of had an emergency slash honourable mentions. I had Rory Sloan. I think he's been very consistent throughout the decade, highly regarded by a lot of people throughout. I got Matt Prittis as well. He won a Brownlow. He was a key part of that engine room for you guys for years. And as I mentioned before, Gaff, purely because of the pure wing factor. Mm -hmm. If I really tried to stick with that, he would have been my first wing pick. For me, uh, Birchall was one I kind of wanted to include but didn't. Prittis, I think, was the very, very next midfielder I had uh, because he won a Brownlow and he was good for that whole period. And why did you pick Cotchen? Brownlow, yeah. most consistency throughout the decade, couple of flags. Yeah. I yeah. like Cotchen as a bloke. I think he's a great mm. player. Uh, but I don't think he's like an elite midfielder, honestly, mm. in my personal opinion. I think Prittis is better over the stretch. I think I think Cotchen is no better than Luke Shuey. If I don't know, Shuey gotten good earlier, he could have been a contender for this list. I think. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think Shuey is um, like close to this team personally. I think Prittis would have gone ahead because he's won the Brownlow. Well, like, I meant if Shuey had got into his prime in like 2012 instead yeah. of like 2016 or whenever he's reached his prime. Yeah, Sh Shuey's definitely a late bloomer. Yeah. Um, he's if he'd had more throughout the whole decade, he probably could have had a sniff of this list. I'll give him credit there. I do like your inclusion of Lacroix on your unlucky list. Yeah. Um, now that I think about it, he was a very accomplished midfielder all through that, um, sorry, forward yeah. over that period. Because so. like I said, I was trying to try and pick the lines as best I could and I was trying to think of a few good small forwards and here was one that I went, He's probably somewhat deserving. Mind you, you got Brewster, and I'd say Brewster's even a better player than Lacra. So yeah, yeah. Best player in each position now. Yeah. Best defender that you picked. I'd probably have to say Rance, even though that's a bit a bit reputation based. Mm -hmm. A lot of like, but yeah, he runs on the board. I'll say Luke Hodge is the best player that I picked in the back line. Midfielder. Five. I agree with you on five. Best forward. <sighs> I'm going to have to say JK. I like it, but I'm, I've actually picked Buddy Franklin, so I've got to stay honest with that. We both agree that Sanderlands is the best ruck yep. because we both picked him as the first player. For and longevity factor, yeah. Best coach? Clarko. Yeah, it's got to the be Wizard. Clarko, but a special mention to Damien Hardwick, who has put together an unreal decade. Took the team yeah. from Richmond. Pre a wooden spoon favourites in 2010 when he took over. He avoided the wooden Perennial spoon Perennial Niners for a middle patch there, and then... <laughs> Two they, flags. Yeah. Um, and unlucky not to have a third, if you uh, think about it. Let's have a look at who the best premiership team was from this decade. Yeah, some of those Hawks teams in that free pay were... It's tough to pick which one was the best list on the day sort of thing. It, it is hard. 2013 was the only year they finished first. 2015, yeah. the performance in that grand final against the Eagles was probably probably peak Hawthorne. Mm. The, people say the Eagles didn't show up, and it's partially true, but I actually just think Hawthorne 
just played to a level the Eagles just couldn't keep up with. Highs 2010, Hawks 2015, I think we'll say is my probably where I thought Hawthorne were peak Hawthorne. Yeah. And the Tigers 2019 is like the third place for me because the team that actually won the grand final was an amazing team, but they did start the year seven and six, so it's hard to really reflect on that too positively. Yeah. But for that third place, I'd probably toss up between Tigers and even your guys in 2018. That was a pretty yeah. good team. Yeah. But Tigers and probably 19 gets the edge because they've got the background of 17 and nearly getting there in 18, so probably give them the edge. The Eagles are, are up there kind of, but I think it's just because they had a lot of key players out and they still yeah. won the flag, and that's the, that was the brilliant thing. What were your What was your favorite grand final from this decade? Even though it cost me money in terms of bets, I'd have to say 18. That was just a great. Oh, really? game. Even though. I I hated seeing the Eagles win, don't get me wrong. It was just that good of a game of football to watch. I couldn't be mad. I agree with you. It's very hard for me not to be biased, but I think 2018 was the best uh, over 2010. And the only reason I'll say the, over the drawn grand final is because I have a special place for grand finals where there's a winning moment. At the end of the 2010 grand final, everyone just fell to the floor like, oh shit, we have to do this again. Even though yeah. it was a great game, for me, grand finals are all about exactly. those huge moments. And, and I know you, you want to see a winner in a grand final. You don't yeah. want to see a draw. You know, uh, yeah, that's winner right. takes all games. So the draw was anticlimactic, as cracking as it was the build up to the draw. Yep. The actual draw itself was a bit. Yeah, that's right. That, yeah. That's the only Deflating. reason it loses points yeah. for me. 2012 was another fantastic grand final. Sydney and Hawthorne. Um, that's very close to being just as good. That Malcheski goal at the end was yeah. a really iconic moment. And then the Bulldogs over. Uh, Sydney and Yeah, the Doggies was a real good emotional like, yeah. narrative in terms of narrative. We were all smashing beers down at Murdoch. Were you there that day? Having beers in the 2016 Grand Final got absolutely Possibly. lit and just enjoyed the Bulldog win. Yeah, probably. If you had to pick a best game, this is a tough one for the decade because you were how old when the decade started? Like 15? 18 Grandies probably up there, I've got to say. Mm. I'll uh, throw a few non-Grand Final games at you. Yeah. Mate, actually, I've got another favourite game. Okay, I'll wait. Freo win down at Skilled against Geelong. Yeah, in the final? Yeah. Yeah, that was the a final game, win actually. in Geelong for us. Is that the high point of Fremantle? Yeah. Yeah, because that basically meant you made the grand final and then you played Sydney at home yeah. to make the grand final. Yeah, I'd say that was probably it. GWS Bulldogs prelim in 2016, rather, when we Bulldogs qualified, they won by a goal. Yeah. Miracle on Grass was 2013. I thought it was earlier than that, but that was where uh, Brisbane were 52 points down against Geelong. And uh, I think Ash, Ash McGrath. McGrath. Yeah, yeah. The, in his 200th. Yep, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And the that other, was a good game. The other shout out I'll give is Hawks Port Adelaide Prelim 2014. That was an yeah. outrageous game. That was the game where everyone after that was like, yep, Hawks are ne up next because it was the Hawks Port. or the current team. And then everyone's like, yeah, Port's up next once Hawks sell off. Cool, man. So that was the decade that was. Thank you yeah. for watching, guys. If you're new to the True Footy YouTube channel, make sure you hit subscribe for more content. Over the off season, I'm going to be doing a few more videos, maybe some creative style videos rather than, you know, actually talk about football. There's no football going on at the moment. So yeah. hopefully we make the AFL YouTube team of the decade. Ah, yes. Well, you'd hope so because there's probably less than 22 of us. Yeah. Put me in the guts. Gross. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you all very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.